Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Roadmaster front base plate on a 2019 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. Now this is what it's going to look like when it's installed. You can see here there's a spot cut open for where the arms actually can go in. Same with the safety chain loop. And the great part, it actually comes with a nice bracket that utilizes the factory uh, mounting points under here. And that's going to allow you to get your breakaway switch and your diode wiring attached. Now it is going to work with your factory rock guard. It's going to take a little bit of cutting to obviously make it fit. But if you have the plastic or metal, it doesn't matter, you can make it work. Now with the metal one, just be prepared to actually be cutting some metal for quite a bit. But once it's all done, it has a nice clean look and I'm really happy with the way that it looks nice and clean, except for the actual points where you'll be making contact. Now when you're ready to actually hook up your vehicle and flat tow it, all you have to do is put these arms in straight like that, give it a twist, and that's going to actually lock that in place. And that's going to be really easy to also remove when you're not towing, just by pulling this pin. Oh, you're good. It's also going to be easy to remove when you aren't flat towing by simply just pulling this pin, twisting this, and pulling it out, and it makes it ni look nice and OEM and clean again. Now we'll go ahead and attach this to our tow bar. And attaching it's going to be pretty easy as you actually just remove our pin here. We'll slide our arms in place. And then we can just put our pin in and you can see it's actually got a nice hole here and that's going to allow us to put our pin right there and keep this from rotating. Now this is designed to actually work with just the Roadmaster style here and that's just this attachment. Now if you have a different tow bar that isn't a Roadmaster, you can actually get uh, adapters for your tow bar and you swap these out and then you'll be able to use these arms. So now we'll just kind of get the rest of our connections made here and you're going to see our safety chain loops here. These are going to clip in nice and easy. They're easy to actually loop them in and they're kind of far enough away from the arms that it kind of spaces it all out, which is really nice as you do have quite a bit of, uh, you know, wiring going on here. So to kind of space that out is really great. Also, we'll get our diode wiring here hooked up. And now we can take our breakaway switch and attach this to the RV. And we'll just cross our safety cables here on the RV side. So now we have all of our connections made between the RV and our towed vehicle. And all that's left to do is get the Wrangler in flat tow mode and hit the road. To begin our installation, we're going to be removing the rock guard here. And that's just attached with seven 13 millimeter bolts. So you're gonna see one here, the five up here, and then one more on this side. So let's go ahead and get those removed. Yeah. Now during the entire install, you really wanna hold on to all your hardware and that way it's gonna make it a lot easier when we put it back in place. So organizing it, using a cup, or uh, just some sort of way to actually keep these contained is gonna make this install that much easier. So let's start. Oop, there's one. Now these can be pretty heavy, so what I'm gonna actually do is kind of get the rest of these off and leave one of them on here, and that way I kind of have control over it. So just, that's kind of up to you, but making sure you have that supported and not falling down should make it a little bit easier. So now we'll go ahead and set this aside. So now on the passenger side attached to the frame is going to be our fog light bulbs. And since we're gonna be pulling the bumper off, we're gonna to wanna to disconnect those. Now there should just be um, a little bit of a push pin here. Sometimes it's easier to actually pry this off the frame from the plastic, but let's see if we can separate it without having to do that. All right, let's pop this off and we'll get a little better leverage here. There we go. So now we have our fog lights unplugged. So now we're going to remove our frame stiffener bracket, which you can see here. And you're gonna have two 18 millimeter bolts that actually are the studs for the bumper to mount up to. And this is gonna be a 16. So what I'm gonna do is loosen this up and then we'll knock out those 18s. So with our 16, we'll just get this loose. 
So now you're going to want to have a deep well socket to get to these just to get over those studs. Uh, but we'll go ahead and get these loose. And again, these will probably be reused later on. So let's make sure we hold on to that hardware. Now we can take these nuts off here and we should be able to just take this frame stiffener off. Now the bumper's not gonna drop because there is two more 18s on the other side, but we will not be reusing these. So you can do whatever you want with these, um, but we're gonna repeat the same process on the other side of the vehicle. So now that we have the frame stiffener off, we can actually go ahead and put our 18 millimeter nuts back on the studs here. And we can actually go ahead and tighten these down. So now we're going to want to remove the two 16 millimeter bolts that are on these rock guard mounts here. And we're going to just take our mount and set it aside for now. But let's go ahead and get these loosened up. And you're going to have two more on the other side. So go ahead and get that removed as well. Now where we removed that 16 millimeter uh, previously on that frame stiffener, you're gonna go right above that and there's gonna be this hole here. Now we're gonna need to enlarge that because the hardware is gonna actually pass through that. So not only are we gonna do it on this side, but we're also gonna have to do it on the inside of the frame and you're gonna want it to be a nice straight shot here. And having one of these handy, uh, the hardware from the actual kit, it's gonna be nice because you can kind of double check to see if you need to wallet it out but a half inch drill bit should get you pretty close to this being able to feed uh, directly through. So again, try to make it as squared up as possible, um, but make sure that you uh, make it nice and clean and also wear your safety glasses while doing this. Now, since we've made some raw metal exposed here, we're gonna go back with just a little bit of spray paint here. Uh, if you have a clear, that's gonna work great. Or if you have black, whatever works best for you, we're just gonna coat that. That way it doesn't turn into rust later on. It's just gonna give it a little added layer of protection. Our base plate is going to slide along here and it's gonna be a nice tight fit, but there is some frame spatter here from the factory. Uh, as some of their welds got a little excessive. Um, so we're gonna need to file this down to make it nice and smooth. So just kind of rub your hands along here and you can kind of feel just some little bumps there. So just let's get these flattened out. Now any spatter that we've gone ahead and filed down, again, this is gonna be exposed metal. So we're just gonna go back here real quick with, with that same spray paint and just kind of coat that up we're ready to actually put our base plate up. So with the extra set of hands, you're gonna to want to raise this up and have your 16 millimeter bolt handy that we removed earlier. So now we're just gonna kind of slide this up into place, aligning those holes. Now the base plate is rather tight on here and I kind of knew that as we went into it knowing that we had to sand off those burrs but I ended up actually having to put this in a vise between two blocks of wood and kind of bending this out to where it widened those tabs so it can actually slide over the frame. Yours may fit slightly different but chances are if ours is tight yours is going to be as well so you're going to want to kind of just bow that out a little bit. And also getting it up in place, there's a lot of metal to metal contact. So really just trying to slide that up is gonna be tricky. So if you're doing this on the ground, I recommend putting a floor jack underneath this to kind of lift it up to put pressure. And then with a dead blow, you can kind of just mitigate it into place until you have your hole aligned. And then we should be able to thread that 16 millimeter in that hole. Something else you're gonna look for is we are gonna be running bolts through here. So if you need to kind of align that, again, just taking that dead blow and kind of knocking it around, that should get it all lined up for you. So now you're gonna to wanna to grab your long bolt here and put a flat washer on there. We're gonna be passing that from the outside to the inside here on the passenger side, and it's gonna go through this hole here. Now to get this to align can be a little bit tricky. Um, I actually kind of use the bolt as leverage and push the base plate to the front a little bit just to kind of get those holes to align. Um, but once you have that passed through, you're gonna just finish this up with a flat washer, a split washer here, and then your nut. And we're gonna just 
hand tighten this on for now as we're going to kind of need this for a little bit of adjustability in case we need to move it around for the other bolts. So just hand tightened is good. So now with the hardware in the kit, you're going to see long bolts. One is actually longer than the other. And the longer one we put down here. Now this one up top, we're going to be using the shorter one and we're going to be using our spacer washer here. And we're going to start with a flat washer here. And what this is going to do is pass through that first spot um, on the actual base plate. And then we're going to feed in that washer, that spacer there. And as this passes through on the back end, we'll just finish it up with a flat washer, a lock nut, uh, a locking washer and our nut. So let's get this passed in. I'm just kind of holding our uh, spacer in place here to make sure that we can pass it through. And uh, again, you may need to kind of line the hitch or the base plate um, to a good spot to where this passes through. Um, just a little bit of wiggling and moving it around with the uh, hammer should get you in place. So just make sure you do a test pass of the bolt through there first. Now you're going to see the frame stiffener is actually going to get in the way if you pass that bolt all the way through. So just put a little bit of thread through and then you can feed your flat washer, your split washer, and then you can actually push your bolt in and then we can put our nut on here. So now we have our bolt that's in our hardware kit. It's going to look like this. We're going to go ahead and put a split washer, a flat washer, and this is going to slide in here. Now, in order for it to thread, we're going to be using this weld nut plate. And you can see it's got this little arm here. So this flat side is going to sit on the inside here. And we're just going to thread that in. There's going to be this hole underneath here. So pretty easy to pass it through. You can see it kind of aligned there. So we'll just go in and kind of get these threads started on here. So now's a good time since we have our passenger side essentially all in place uh, to make sure that everything's kind of level, um, kind of squared up because we're gonna need to actually do the driver's side. And if we tighten this down and it's crooked, it's gonna make for a little rough time on the other side. So once we kind of have this nice and aligned and leveled out, we're gonna go ahead and tighten these down. There is gonna be a certain sequence. We're gonna start with our factory 16 that we put in, then we'll follow it up uh, on these larger bolts and then we'll go ahead and do this last one. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll tighten these down. Now on these ones, this bolt or the nut on the back side of this one actually kind of rests against the frame stiffener. So that should kind of stay in place, hopefully as we tighten it, but you may need to put a, uh, a wrench on the back side or a socket on the other. Either way, that way you can actually get a nice secure tightening down of the bolt. So... We'll go ahead and get these cranked down. Now we have these nice and snug. I'm gonna go back with a torque wrench and using the instructions, I'm just using a manufacturer's recommendation for those torque settings. So we're gonna go through and make sure that these are all tightened down. Now you may still need to use a, um, a wrench on the back end. And a lot of times I tried to tighten it on the nut side. So this one I can actually get to the nut. This one I'm not able to unfortunately um, to be able to tighten it. So I'm just gonna have to get the torque on this one. And this one you're essentially, uh, this is gonna kinda hold this in place for you to tighten it. If this bends or breaks off, totally fine. In fact, we're gonna have to remove that afterwards anyway, but uh, don't be surprised if that does come off. Now, if you need a torque wrench, we actually have them available here at E-Trailer, or you can normally rent them at an auto parts store, but this is gonna be an important step. Make sure that we don't have too much stress on the threads, but also that it's not gonna come loose over time. So I've gone ahead and torqued this one down. And if this is still on here, no big deal. We're gonna need to pop this off. So just kind of going back and forth here, that should loosen up that little tack weld and this should come out pretty easily, as you can see there. So with that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and put our rock guard mount back up in place. So we'll just set this in and use those 16 millimeter bolts that came off originally and we'll get this tightened down.
So now we're just gonna go ahead and repeat all those steps on the driver's side. So I've gone ahead and I've tightened and torqued our driver's side. So now it brings us to the point where we're gonna have our rock guard and I'm just gonna kind of set this up in place and kind of align those holes and you're gonna to start to see that we are gonna to have to trim to make this work. So I'm gonna just go ahead and kind of eyeball where it actually needs to poke through from. So it looks like where our safety chain loop will be as well as our receiver opening. So um, with a paint marker, I'm gonna just go ahead and make a few marks and then I'm gonna use an angle grinder to kind of just cut through here to allow for clearance on these. So it's gonna be pretty hard to actually see how far back we need to go without kind of just trimming a little bit and then mocking it back up and working with that. We want a nice clean fit. So uh, just doing a little bit at a time, I'm just gonna go back about an inch uh, to this portion here and I'm gonna notch this out as well. Um, and then when we have all those cut, I can hold it up and see how much more we need to go back. But uh, for this step, make sure you're wearing safety glasses. An angle grinder is gonna work pretty well here or um, if you have a sawzall, that can also work. Just take your time and be careful. Uh, it is pretty thick, it's gonna throw some sparks. And also you're gonna want to go back with a file later to get some of those burrs out. But let's go ahead, we'll make our first cuts and then mock it up. The model that we're actually installing this on is from a Rubicon, so that's why this is metal. So if you have a different model where yours is plastic, you can actually use some shears and cut through that. So it's gonna be a little bit easier. Um, but if you have metal, you're kind of limited. So an angle grinder again, or a sawzall is gonna be a good method to do this. So you can see I've actually made a few extra cuts. I'm still gonna have to keep going here, but again, we're just gonna keep going until it's a nice clean fit. Um, and then we'll go back with some finishing touches of sanding and hitting this with some paint. After mocking it up and doing a few different trimmings on here, I ended up with these rough measurements here. So it's about an inch wide for your safety chain loop. And that's gonna be right about four inches of total length. Now it does curve up. So you're just gonna kinda wanna cut to about this curve here. Um, again, you may have to tidy it up a little bit better for yours, but this is kind of rough to get you in the ballpark. And this one's about three and a half wide, and uh, it, it goes back about that same four inches, maybe just a little bit here. Um, and then we're gonna have the same on the other side. So now that this cuts, I've actually made sure that I can get my bolts back in place. I'm gonna just go back with a file and get these all nice and clean looking. And then I'm gonna go back with that spray paint again, just coating some of this raw metal. That way it's gonna stay protected. So now we're gonna touch up this exposed metal, but instead of using the clear coat like we did before, I'm gonna go ahead and use a flat black and that's gonna help kind of match it up. And I've just ran some tape around here. That way the overspray, uh, it's not gonna just look like a big blob of paint. It's gonna kind of clean up the lines here. So go ahead and touch up all that raw metal. So now once we have everything trimmed up and fit and nice and painted, we can go ahead and get our rock guard back up in place. So now we have our rock guard back in place. Just make sure that you go back and plug in your fog lamp. So grab your plug and get that back in place here. And we can actually pop this back on its clip. Well, this clip might have to kind of move here just because we have our base plate in the way, or you can just simply zip tie this up. That way it's not dangling down. And that was a look and installation of the Roadmaster base plate on a 2019 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited.